people haven't taken off yet. It doesn't phase them at all. When the police, the National Guard, the Sheriff's Department is unable to stop it. Today's society is growing increasingly volatile. Whether it be the economy, acts of terrorism, or just plain old looting, there are many situations that can put you or your family in danger. What I've come up with, with my military experience, my survival training, is a system that will allow you to not only plan for, but have the techniques in place for your own survival. I'm Chance Sanders, and this is Surviving Civil Unrest. As we look at the last five years, it's pretty obvious to see that there's been a disintegration in social cohesion. The urban environment is challenging because you have so many people packed into such small space, which causes unbelievable problems when there is a disruption in the delivery of goods and services. So if we ever have a situation where we don't have uh, goods and services delivered, we'll experience chaos. We have a, a saying that we're nine meals away from anarchy. And what that means is, if people don't get fed for three days, you'll see chaos and anarchy. We've seen it in the uh, hurricanes when we work down uh, security for those, and it is, it is a really common thing to see social unrest. In order to develop a good plan, you need to be able to outline that plan into something that makes sense. And one of the things in the military we use is a five paragraph order, and it basically goes something like this. You have orientation, situation, mission, execution, administration and logistics, command and signal. And if you look at your family plan or your escape plan or your bug out plan, you can kind of list everything that you need to do according to that. The, the big populated, densely commercial areas have always been basically where the riots have taken place at. People, they, they lose their mind when the slightest little bit of unrest comes in and you know, they don't start thinking about anybody at themselves. You know, the, the, the buildings they were burning and stuff down there in LA at the time, during the, the Watts riots were retail buildings after they'd already broke in and stolen everything. You know, fast forward a couple of years and actually here in, in the town we're sitting in, there, there was riots pretty much following the Watts riots along the same, you know, lines. Once again, it was the residential neighborhoods were fine. It was the commercial and business um, areas in the town that were being broke into, televisions, you know, VCRs, things of that nature were being stolen. It's not food. It wasn't food, it wasn't water, it wasn't medical supplies. These are creature comforts that these people basically just wanted but didn't want to pay for. Them. And that's what they were targeting at the time. The big thing I see in, in any of the historical riot situations is people going in and they're just using this as an excuse to let their inner, you know, bad guy, for lack of a better word, come out. Their inner thieves come out and just take things that they wanted that they didn't want to pay for. Them. 